Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff, good afternoon, sir. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. So let's pick up from where we last left off. This is the second podcast with our tropical update series, which we started last Friday, June 7th. We're recording this on June 10. So since then, Jeff, not a lot has drastically changed. We still have a broad area of low pressure over Central America. We have convection in the Northern Caribbean and moisture working its way in to the Eastern Gulf. I think that moisture right now for the short term is going to be affecting Florida mostly. We've got uh, rainfall amounts models showing um, up to 12 inches a foot of rain for Central and Southern Florida. Some beyond that, those are probably outliers, but you know anything's possible. I mean, they were in a drought situation, so good for them for getting out of it. But boy, they're going to be uh, definitely dealing with some flooding rains down there. Um, but uh, the the later model runs, as I started noticing yesterday and the day before, uh, the newer model runs, I should say, uh, are showing a little bit of a shift to the west with some of that moisture. So right now, the good news is National Hurricane Center on their outlooks are, are still saying no tri tropical cyclone formation within the next seven days. So we're going to stick with that guidance, but uh, it'll be interesting to see if that changes over the next uh, day or so. And um, also just a reminder, June 8th was the anniversary for Tropical Storm Allison back in 2001. I say reminder because Although tropical cyclones are rare in the month of June, they do happen, and Allison is one of those examples. Allison was kind of a long-tracking tropical wave that moved over in the Yucatan and eventually into the Gulf, but it didn't actually become a named storm until June 5th and made landfall essentially the same day, just a few hours after becoming a named storm. The winds were basically not a factor. I think highest wind recorded were 59 miles per hour. But Allison was certainly a rain event. It did a lot of damage. Unfortunately, 41 lives were lost during Allison. And uh, the numbers vary a little bit, but anywhere from six to nine billion dollars in damage. And that, that death uh, toll, uh, you know, it occurred all the way from Houston, uh, all the way up to, to Pennsylvania. So a lot of widespread damage. And just a reminder that in the month of June, we get a lot of uh kind of the disturbances in, in weak areas of uh, tropical development, but they can spin up quick and don't leave a lot of time for preparation. Jeff, what are your thoughts? Yeah, it's interesting you bring up Allison. I'll go back to the satellite image. Uh, this was the satellite image of, of Tropical Storm Allison on June the 5th, 2001, and you can clearly see what we call an exposed low-level center, so a clear swirl here around the Freeport San Luis Pass area. And notice all the showers and thunderstorms, all the weather is over here on the east side of this. Very interesting. I'm going to show you some model guidance for next week and, and maybe some similarities, if you will, to the setup uh, that we had in the Northwest Gulf back to 2001. Okay, so let's go through the model guidance for early next week. All of this is for Monday morning around sunrise, June the 17th. So we're, with, we're right around that seven-day period. Um, interestingly enough, the guidance since Friday has kind of pushed this back a little bit, and that's something we're going to have to keep an eye on because when the when the models sort of start pushing things back, it's somewhat of an indication that that uh, you may never really see development here. Um, but this is the GFS again. This is for Monday morning, um, next Monday morning, June the seventeenth, and you can see it shows a very weak elongated area of low pressure somewhere off the southwest Louisiana coast. Notice all of this moisture over here on the east side of it in southeast Louisiana and Mississippi. Um, we'll see if, if this is actually what happens or not. This is probably somewhat of the more aggressive side of the guidance. Uh, this is a look at the Canadian model, a little bit further to the west with more of a trough axis here. So there's no actual surface low or closed low here on the Canadian, but you can see it kind of shows these kind of banding features coming up from the south and southeast on the east side of a trough axis. So uh, potentially wet into the western Gulf of Mexico, at least that moisture you were talking about, Scott, down in that northwest Caribbean, eventually working its way over here into the northwest Gulf. And then the European, a little bit similar in, in, in position to the GFS, but also similar to the Canadian with no surface low. So uh, heavy rains here and moisture south of the Louisiana coast, very similar to what the GFS was showing. 
but no closed circulation here showing up on, on the European. Uh, interestingly enough, it does have some activity down here in the Eastern Caribbean. And so we kind of talked about this trough axis across Central America, and there could be development on the Eastern Car on, on the uh, West Eastern Pacific side of this axis. So that is something uh, to keep in mind. And then we'll look at the, the ensembles again. The ensembles is what you really want to look at versus the deterministic runs, which we just looked at, because the ensembles will sort of highlight areas um, that the deter you're not just using one deterministic run, but multiple runs with slightly different initial conditions. Um, so this is the GFS for, again, next Monday morning, the June 17th. And you can see here, it does have a little bit of a signal here in the Northwest Gulf of Mexico. It still is showing the signal down here around the Yucatan and Central America. I wouldn't say this is a strong signal, um, but a little bit of a kink here at the 10,008 millibars and, and, and some instances here of, of possibly some surface low pressure in the Northwestern Gulf. Um, the European is probably less defined, especially in the Northwestern Gulf, no big surprise there. Um, it is sort of keying in down here on the Bay of Campeche, and that is a potential, that is a possibility um, that the European may be kind of latching on to possibly something from the East Pacific side meandering up or a surface low forming down here off of the Central American trough uh, in the Bay of Campeche. And that, that's certainly on the table. That's not kind of what we were focused on um, in the Northwestern Gulf of Mexico. But that just goes to show you the uncertainty uh, that we're talking about at seven days. So you can see surface low pressure potentially develop weak surface low pressure potentially develop anywhere from the Louisiana coast back down towards the Yucatan all the way over to the Bay of Campeche sometime late this weekend, Father's Day weekend into early next week. And so you can kind of see there with all of the different guidance. This is why we kind of uh, caution folks on, on using any particular model run. The other thing I wanted to point out, this is just the GFS again, but what I did want to point out is, is there appears to be kind of what we see regularly in the western Gulf of Mexico, a lot of moisture on the east side of this kind of trough axis and dry air on the west side of this. And this is exactly what we see, Tropics from Allison, that satellite you saw with the center exposed on the west side. We see this time and time again in the western Gulf. So you get these big surges of moisture coming up out of the Caribbean, and on the east side of that trough axis, and you can see all this moisture and heavy rain. And if we were to see some sort of surface low eventually develop here in the western and northwestern Gulf, it is likely going to be what we call a lopsided system. What that means is all of the weather, all the heavy rain, all the gusty winds would be out in the central Gulf of Mexico, the central U.S. Gulf Coast. Um, maybe not so much in the Texas coast, depending on exactly how this uh, all unfolded. Even you can see here on the GFS, even though it's showing a closed low here, this is very much a trough axis. You can see there's southerly winds here, um, very weak winds in the northwestern Gulf, and then the winds really pick up here on the east side of that trough axis. And so, you know, looking at it right now, I still think there's a lot of uncertainty as we get into late this weekend or early next week. Uh, there is still, I would say, a low potential for something potentially to develop. We'll see if the National Hurricane Center eventually outlooks this area uh, with a percentage for development. And then once something, if something were to form, again, it looks very lopsided, eastern favored um, with the weather. So that's where the squalls and the gusty winds and the heavy rains. And I don't see anything right now. Uh, suggesting that this would be a strong system. It's going to be very difficult to get any sort of strong system in the north or western Gulf of Mexico with all this dry air here lurking uh, off to the west. So that, that dry air gets kind of ingested into that circulation and cuts down that thunderstorm development near the, near the center if the center was to form. And so again, very similar to Friday, we're in hurricane season. We do have moisture and, and thunderstorm activity developing out in the Gulf of Mexico. So it's good to keep an eye on things as we go here through this week. And uh, we will update again, I believe on Wednesday is the plan to update this uh, situation again on Wednesday, just to see where we are. Um, and again, this time of year, it's great to check that tropical weather outlook just at least once a day. So you keep on top of things. She pointed out Friday, the model runs over seven days aren't too reliable, but now we are looking at model runs seven days out. And three scenarios that uh, maybe have, we're, we're getting a little bit more more confidence that one of those three scenarios might take place, Jeff. Yeah, I think there's there's possibly a little bit of 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 
slight confidence, and I'm using a bunch of possibly maybes in there. Um, but but again, I, when you're dealing with the, it, it's a very complex setup that we have in the Gulf of Mexico. We're going to have this big surge of moisture this week, the end of this week, going to Florida. That we're pretty confident is not going to develop anything. But then you have all this moisture left behind. You still have this trough down around Central America. Um, it is possible we get an Eastern Pacific tropical system. And sometimes uh, we can get a, a tropical system on the northern side of that trough axis. And that I think that's what the models are kind of struggling with is it's just a broad trough. And does it have enough to close off into a surface load? And we see this a lot in the western Gulf of Mexico during the hurricane season. Um, a lot of times these, these troughs just never really get that westerly wind, that dry air is impacting them. Um, and eventually, as it comes westward, as the trough axis comes westward into the Texas coast, we get the rain and the squalls and some gusty winds, but we never really get a named system from it. And that very well could be what happens here next week. Or we could see a, a weak surface low spin up along that trough axis, really anywhere from the central Gulf Coast all the way down to the Bay of Campeche. You know, if something spins up in the Bay of Campeche and moves into the south of us, obviously no big concern. We would just be you know, have increased rain chances and potentially uh, some heavy rains. Something a little bit further north, we might have to add a little bit of of wind into it and stuff like that. But again, nothing right now that, that I'm seeing suggests anything more than than a tropical depression or or maybe just a minimal tropical storm, if even that. Yeah, I think this last graph you show is a great graphic because it really shows the contrast of the moist air versus the continental dry air. And that that to me is the big question mark right there. How much of that dry continental air is going to come into play. Yeah, that's exactly right. You got the the continental dry air and then and then the other thing to to look at if I can if I can pull it up real quick is is the uh the upper level winds and generally speaking this is probably going to be uh a situation where we're looking at uh a little bit of uh yeah and <laughs> yeah exactly what I was thinking. So you have southerly uh, southwesterly, southerly wind shear here across the northwestern Gulf of Mexico with that dry air. Remember that surface low would have been right here, maybe on the eastern side of this, but you're talking 30, 40 knots of southerly, southwesterly winds in the in the western Gulf. So that combined with the dry air just is not super favorable. Um, conditions are a lot more favorable here south of the Louisiana coast. Um, but this is very typical of Western Gulf, you know, if, if just exactly where that low pressure potentially tries to close off um, and it has to find those favorable conditions. And you can see there's a lot of red on this map. Uh, again, this is just one model, but there's a lot of red on this map. And this is very typical of June. We still have a lot of wind shear out in this area and the portions of the Atlantic. And so things just aren't quite there yet. Uh, for f really favorable conditions for tropical systems to develop. Um, the other thing I'll point out is, is sometimes these shear maps going out seven days aren't the best. And so could it be higher? Could it be lower? Absolutely, it could be. Um, but sort of a, when you combine this with that dry air, uh, this, is, this is probably a, a relatively unfavorable uh, look here in the Northwestern Gulf for any sort of, of tropical development. Jeff said we'll have another update for Wednesday morning, so stay tuned. And we'll also have the link to the Weather Insights YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the channel. And if you would, uh, please consider sharing it, too. We want to get this information out to as many people as possible. So we'd appreciate you considering a share. Jeff, thanks a bunch as always. And until next time, have a good one. We'll see you then.